Hi and welcome back to scottystech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and today I want to talk about how you can get rid of Wi-Fi in your home and replace it with Ethernet. Now, uh, typically you're going to have an internet service provider, obviously, and the internet service provider is going to give you a box, some kind of modem. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have uh, fiber or DSL via a phone line or maybe a cable modem. Uh, internet via your cable service, uh, it doesn't matter if you have satellite internet, it doesn't matter what kind of internet you have, you're going to have a box. Now this is the kind of box we use where I live. That's the top, that's the front, and uh, this is, uh, you can't really see, there's a screen right here, and it's a touch screen, so it's not very, not very exciting, but the important part is that on the back of the box, you'll notice we have a variety of ports. Uh, over here on the right, you have this eSATA port if you want to hook up an external hard drive. Telephone 1, Telephone 2 for connecting lines, phone lines. Uh, this is um, a jack for ADSL or VDSL. So that's if you have uh, DSL, like a phone line, you plug it in here. You've got power, your reset button. And then this guy, number 5, these are all Ethernet ports. And this guy is labeled Fibra. You can probably see that. That's fiber, because I live in France, so uh, this would be for if you connect, they give you like a little box, you plug the fiber into the box and then you plug that in here. Newer modems actually have a jack for the optical fiber. But the ports that we're actually concerned about are these guys over here. One, two, three, four. They're all Ethernet jacks, and you can see they're labeled ETH1, ETH2, ETH3, and ETH4. Now. This box is actually going to give you internet service normally via Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is usually turned on by default, and you just use your laptop or your smartphone or whatever, and boom, you connect via Wi-Fi and you have internet access. So if you turn the Wi-Fi off, then you're going to need a way to connect to the internet, and the way you do that is with Ethernet. So on most modems, now this may be slightly different in your area, but most modems are going to have these Ethernet ports on the back usually labeled ETH1234. These are the ports that you want to connect stuff to. So you could start off by simply getting an Ethernet cable, such as this guy. Now this guy is, as you can see on here, he says category 6. See if I can untwist that a little bit. He says CAT6, UTP CAT6. Um, this is a Category 6 Ethernet cable. That's what it looks like. You've got these funky little connectors on either end. And you can pick up a uh, either a Category 6 or a Category 7. I actually recommend getting Category 7 now, as someone pointed out to me recently. Um, category 6 cable is good for up to 1 gigabit per second. Category 7 cable is good for up to 10 gigabits per second. Now typically you're not going to get 10 gigabits per second because the switches you buy will be for only gigabit, 1 gigabit Ethernet, which is plenty fast. It's much faster than Wi-Fi typically is. Um, I made another video on uh, called something like another reason not to use Wi-Fi, and in that video, uh, which I'll link to, uh, I explain why uh, even though Wi-Fi boxes and, and modems have very high speeds on the label, practically speaking, you're typically not going to get anywhere near one gigabit per second. So by switching from Wi-Fi to Ethernet, not only are you eliminating all the potential health risks of being bombarded in radio waves all the time, but you're actually getting a faster and more reliable network. So as I said, you can buy one of these Ethernet cables. Um, you can get a 25-foot or a 10-meter uh, category 7 Ethernet cable on Amazon or wherever for about 10 bucks. So 25 feet slash 10 meters ish, 10 bucks for the cable. And uh, what you could do is take the Ethernet cable, you take one end, you plug it into one of these four ports, and you take your other end and you plug it into your computer, and you wait about a minute and turn off your Wi-Fi and you should have internet access. So, wasn't that easy. <clears throat> well, yes, if your modem from your ISP is actually sitting right next to your computer and you don't need to hook anything else up, that's all you have to do. Turn off the Wi-Fi in one of these ETH ports in the back, plug an Ethernet cable in, other end of the cable to your computer, your, your desktop, whatever, your laptop, and Bob's your uncle. 
okay, but what if your modem is in some central location and your computer's on the other side of the house and maybe you want to use your, your laptop while sitting in bed or something, watch Netflix or whatever. Uh, maybe you want to connect a smartphone or a tablet and these are all in different areas of your house. Uh, that's one of the reasons that everyone loves Wi-Fi because you have one central location, it emits the waves, and wherever you are in the house, you can connect, you're done. Well, in order to show how you actually wire a house with Ethernet, um, I would actually need a physical house that hasn't been wired yet, which I don't have. So instead, I made a digital house. And you will notice that uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, we have our master bedroom. Sometimes we use a laptop up there. In the upper right-hand corner of the house, we have a sort of like a little home office with a computer, and sometimes we also want to use our smartphone. In the bedroom to the left of that, uh, again, we have someone there who may want to use a laptop occasionally. And then downstairs in the little right-hand corner, we have our living room uh, with our big screen TV, which is, of course, internet enabled. And that is where we watch all of our favorite Scotty's Tech.info videos on the big screen, because, of course, who doesn't do that? And we also might want to use a tablet, a smartphone, and a computer while sitting on the couch or whatever. And then you also notice in the very center of the house on the lower level, uh, there's a little telephone on that uh, piece of furniture, and right next to it, that's our ISP's modem. That's the box that the ISP gave us, and that's actually giving us Wi-Fi. These are all the devices that we want to connect, uh, circled in red, and the red arrow is pointing to the, our ISP's modem that they gave us, and so that uh, gives you an idea of why Wi-Fi is usually favored. Because as you can see, the Wi-Fi box is just going to emit Wi-Fi and it's going to cover the whole house. Now, okay, well, how do we actually connect up Ethernet to the modem? Now, what you could do is simply run individual Ethernet cables, as I've shown here with the pink lines. Uh, you could run one to, say, your television. You could run one to one of the upstairs bedrooms, one to the master bedroom, one to your home office and connect up just your computer. And there are a couple of problems with this. Uh, the first problem is that you are running more than one cable. You're actually running three cables to the upstairs and one cable to the downstairs, which is not very efficient. Uh, the other problem is uh, quite obvious, which is that in your upstairs home office, uh, you can only have one gizmo connected at a time. So if your computer is hooked up to the Internet, your smartphone is not. You can't use a USB to Ethernet adapter because uh, you've only got one cable. And downstairs in the living room, obviously, if your TV is connected, well, then your tablet and your smartphone and your laptop are not connected. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, as you can see in that image, uh, I just drew the pink lines kind of willy-nilly, just as sort of an illustration of, right, you're going to connect an Ethernet cable, one end to the box, the modem, and the other end to your gizmo. You wait, like, maybe 30 seconds or a minute. Uh, the box assigns an IP address. Boom, you have Internet connectivity. You can turn off all your Wi-Fi, and Bob's your uncle. Um, as you can see in that picture, uh, that's obviously not how you're going to route cables. <laughs> I actually had uh, a couple of friends who they would run Ethernet cables like up and over the couch and then under the coffee table and then just across the floor and that was it. And they left it that way. But most likely if you do that, uh, your spouse is going to punch you in the face. So the, the, the question is how do you actually route Ethernet cables nicely? So in this picture, you can see um, this is a picture of the top of a door frame, and in the lower left-hand corner, there is a door, and you see the Ethernet cable is actually going through uh, the upper right corner of the door. Uh, in this particular instance, the, there was a enough of a gap at the top of the door where I could run the Ethernet cable through, and when I open and close the door, it's not going to rub on the cable at all. And so then it was just a matter of using little cable tack thingies, little plastic clips with nails, and you just run the cable along the door and then up across the top of the door frame, down the left side of the door frame, and then I run it along, around the perimeter uh, of the room and then coil it up under a bed. In this case, this is an Ethernet cable routed into a bedroom. Um, this is actually uh, kind of an important point. Uh, you're, you know, if you have Wi-Fi, it's, you get coverage everywhere. So uh, what you're going to need to do with Ethernet is you run a certain number of cables and you leave the other end Connected, you could say coil it up and put it under a bed, leave it under your couch or something. When you want to use it, you simply just reach under the couch, pull the pull the Ethernet cable out, plug it in, do your stuff, and when you're done, you coil it up, stuff it back under the couch, you're done. In any case, uh, using these little cable tacky things, that's one way of doing it. Another 
better way of doing it actually is as I showed here. This is another cable routed and in this case I used a hot glue gun. Now I wrote an article about using a hot glue gun to secure your phone and ethernet cables. I'll link to that in the description as well. And using a hot glue gun you can actually get a pretty nice, um, it, it's a nice finish. Uh, mostly you're going to want to route cables along baseboards, up, you know, up where two walls meet, um, up along, you know, crown molding or along the corner, the up, the, the inside corner at the top of a wall or something. You're going to want to route the cables like around the perimeter of the room uh, and kind of make things pretty. Right. So at some point you're going to have to run cables across the floor and that's what this guy is for. You can see here uh, you've got a that's what it looks like. You lay it on your floor. You've got two gaps here. You can put any kind of cables you want in here. The blue cover, it pops off. Uh, this one's kind of dirty because it's uh, sort of used. And you can buy this stuff in rolls. And you basically put, you, you take the top off, you put your ethernet cable inside, snap the cover on, which is not easy to do. And then you run this across your floor and because of the profile, you can run that under an area rug, you can put it along carpet or a hard floor, and you're not going to be squishing the ethernet cable. Okay, well why do you not want to squish the ethernet cable? You don't want to squish the ethernet cable because this is uh, an example of category 6 ethernet cable. If you snip it, that's what one end looks like. And the other end, I've taken it apart here, and you can see you have the outer layer is foil for shielding, then there's this kind of plastic wrap inner layer, and then you have this uh, totally fascinating jumble of wires. This is actually four pairs, four twisted pairs of wires. And if I separate these, you'll notice, if I can separate them, that there's this, this very interesting, it's like a plastic cross in the middle. So basically each pair of wires is twisted together, and then the different pairs of wires are twisted kind of around each other. That's what actually gives uh, an ethernet cable it's high speed. So the one thing that you want to avoid, uh, actually two things, the first thing you want to avoid is crushing the cable flat because as you can see if I squish this cable flat I don't get that, I, I take the twisted pairs that are sort of twisted around each other and I mush them flat and that will reduce signal integrity which in plain normal English means uh, you are going to decrease the speed of your ethernet cable so you don't want to drive over an ethernet cable with say a desk chair and that's why these cable guards are actually quite nice. The second thing is when you're routing cables, when you're routing any ethernet cable, you have to be very careful. You should never ever ever do this. That's very bad because again you've just squished everything inside and you may have problems with the speed of the cable and eventually you will break the copper wires inside and it's going to stop working. So when you're routing cable, whether it's along a baseboard or whatever, whenever you have to change directions, you want to gently curve it. So you might want to do, there, there are actually specifications like a, like a one inch radius or a two inch radius. So usually like if, if I'm in a corner here, I might route the cable like that. So you want sort of like a gentle bend. You never want to actually crimp it and stuff it in a corner like that. So if you follow that rule, and the no crushing rule, then your ethernet cable will be good to go. So, now that we understand how to route cables, and again, you're going to have to just sort of figure out uh, where the optimal route is, you're also most likely going to have to uh, drill a hole through the ceiling at some point. Uh, you'll have to figure out, you know, don't drill into any electrical conduits or that kind of thing. Another fun trick is if you have forced air, uh, forced air heat and, and cooling in your house, uh, you may be able to actually route ethernet cables through the ductwork. In any case, figure out some way using cable tackies or uh, hot glue and remembering not to bend, crimp the cable, don't crush it, uh, route it around the perimeter of the room. Right, so here we are back again, we still have this problem of how on earth are we going to get all of our gizmos hooked up. And the way we're going to do that is with ethernet switches. So this is a D-Link 8-port gigabit ethernet switch, and it is the DGS-108. Now this works exactly like your modem does. If you want to hook a device up to it, you simply take one end of your ethernet cable and plug it in. Now, if this cable 
is coming from your modem, ETH1, ETH2, ETH3, ETH4, this end is plugged into your modem, the other end is plugged into your switch. All the other seven ports here are now available to connect to either another switch or to any gizmo that you want internet connectivity on. That's it. You can, you can daisy chain as many of these as you want. You only connect one cable between any two points. Now let's look at a picture so that uh, that's a bit more clear. So here you can see for the master bedroom upstairs, well, that end of the house, we only need one computer. So I just ran one cable up to that room. And of course we have the stairway in the middle of the house. Now on the right side of the house, I ran one cable from the modem in the center hallway uh, through around somehow to, let's say we put a switch uh, on our TV stand and there's a cable going to that. So from the modem to the ethernet switch by the TV. And then I run one cable from the ethernet switch by the TV up into the home office. Then all it takes is using more ethernet cables to connect. For example, in the upstairs office, I connect the computer with, with uh, another cable. I connect another cable to my smartphone using a, a USB to ethernet adapter or a uh, ethernet dongle. Then I take another cable and I run it from the switch in the upstairs office, you know, through a, through a heating or cooling vent or you know, through a little hole in the wall or something. Somehow I get a cable from the ethernet switch in the upstairs home office to the bedroom next door. And then downstairs, of course, I do the same thing. You just connect an ethernet cable up to the switch by the TV, hook up the TV, uh, coil up some extra cables, maybe three of them, put it underneath the couch, uh, and Bob's your uncle. Now you'll notice that there's a plus four and a plus two above the switches. That's indicating the number of free ports that are on those two switches. So what that means is that in my living room, I have two free ports so I can hook up two more gizmos if I want. So for example, if I have uh, uh, some kind of streaming device that needs internet connectivity in addition to the TV, or if I have a Blu-ray player and I can hook that up to ethernet or something, uh, I have two free ports downstairs, so I, I can hook up my TV and these other gizmos on my TV stand and the tablet, the smartphone, and the laptop. And also upstairs in the home office, I have four free ports, so I can hook up to four more gizmos with Ethernet cables. Right, a couple things I forgot to mention. Your Ethernet switch has a little power brick, so wherever you put this guy, you need to have power. These D-Link switches, these are gigabit switches, and they're about $34. Um, your typical ethernet cable that's like 25 feet or uh, if you're in Europe about 10 meters long. Category 7, they're about $10 a piece for 25 feet or 10 meters. Uh, you can get them in longer lengths, you can get them in shorter lengths, you can get pretty much whatever length you want. Uh, it is possible to buy a reel of Category 7 cable and then you buy the connectors and you crimp them on yourself. I don't recommend doing that unless you've done it before and you know what you're doing because it can be very, very painful depending on the type of connectors you buy, the type of cable. It just gets really hairy. So um, there's really no need for anyone to do that. Uh, if you know how to do it, go crazy. But if you know how to do that, you've probably got your whole house wired for Ethernet anyway. Uh, so buy some D-Link 1 gigabit switches, like 30, 34 bucks a piece. You buy some cables, they're usually 10 or $15 a piece. And Bob's your uncle. Now, uh, one final note is that these switches are a gigabit per second. There is a new Ethernet standard that's coming out. The reason I suggest Category 7 cable is because I recently discovered that CAT7 cable is actually the same price now in most places as CAT6. And Category 6 cable can only do 1 gigabit per second, but Category 7 can do 10 gigabits per second, which is way, way faster than any Wi-Fi out there. Even if you have only Category 6 cable, so if you buy Category 7 cable and you buy this switch, it's only going to run at 1 gigabit per second because the switches will only support up to 1 gigabit. But in the future, after you've run Category 7 cable all over your house, you're basically future-proof because all you have to do is replace, as in our example, there were two switches. All you have to do is buy two new switches that support faster speeds. The new speeds are going to be, instead of one gigabit, it's either two and a half or five gigabits per second, or you can go for some kind of professional 10 gigabit per second switch if you want to spend a lot of money. But here I'm talking like your normal home user, 30 bucks and you got a switch. 
eventually the new switches are going to support two and a half and five gigabits per second. So when they are released for sale, uh, you've already got category seven cable everywhere. All you have to do is buy two new switches that support the higher speeds, swap them out, and you've just upgraded your home network and it will be way faster than anything that Wi-Fi offers at that time. So by wiring your house with category seven cable, uh, it's a little painful. Yeah, you have to use the cable tackies. You have to, you know, do the hot glue. How are you going to route the cables? Do you need to drill a hole somewhere? It's a little bit hairy. But if you use the category seven cable, once it's done, you're pretty much done for like 10 years minimum. Like it's going to be a while before that becomes too slow. Um, plus you've eliminated uh, the health risks of having Wi-Fi all the time. Uh, again, if you want to use a tablet or a smartphone, uh, with an Ethernet cable, you just have to get the right dongle for it, the right USB Ethernet adapter. I did another video on that. So, there you have it. That is how to wire your house with Ethernet. And then, after you've done that, you can get my lovely t-shirt. Wi-Fi? Why indeed? Or perhaps this other lovely t-shirt. Real men use Ethernet. Actually, I have a real women use Ethernet too, so, you know. In any case, check out my Teespring store if you want to buy some Scotty stuff. It helps support my channel. And that's about it. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.